This is the deadliest zombie virus I've ever seen. Once you come into contact with this virus, you're as good as dead, inevitably turning into a mindless flesh-eating zombie. The story begins at a secret military research facility where a doctor is conducting twisted experiments on reanimating the dead. With an injection of a drug into the body of a cold corpse, the lifeless body unexpectedly starts twitching. However, things quickly take a strange turn as the body begins violently vomiting blood and decomposing rapidly, ultimately mutating into a bloodthirsty zombie. Clearly, the experiment ends in failure. The doctor realizes the virus has mutated, and to prevent an outbreak, he reluctantly contacts the military to take the virus away. However, during the handover, a group of thugs posing as research personnel suddenly emerges. After a fierce firefight, both sides suffer heavy casualties, and only one thug manages to seize the virus container. Before he can escape, reinforcements from the base arrive. The desperate thug had no choice but to run into the nearby forest. Knowing the catastrophic consequences of the virus leaking, the doctor immediately dispatched a helicopter to pursue. Just as the thug was about to enter the forest, the soldiers had to resort to gunfire. After a round of shooting, the virus container in the thug's hand fell to the ground. Still determined to retrieve it, he reached out, only to have his hand corroded by the leaked virus. With the helicopter losing sight of the target, and the injured thug hastily escaping, neither realized the severity of the situation. The thug, now at a motel, began to undergo drastic physical changes. Seeing his rotten right hand, he decisively chopped it off, but this failed to halt the mutation. Before long, a maid entered the room to clean, finding the bedsheets soaked in blood. Perplexed, she heard groaning from the bathroom and, concerned for the guest's well-being, entered. Inside, she was confronted by horrifying bloodstains everywhere, before being swiftly dispatched by the fully mutated thug. The news of the motel incident quickly alarmed the military. To prevent the virus from spreading, everyone inside the motel was forcibly quarantined. However, when they found the thug, he was already dead. The military wasted no time in transporting the body back to the base for incineration. Upon learning this, the doctor was furious because the smoke from burning the body still carried the virus, posing an even greater disaster. But it was too late. As the thick smoke rose into the air, the first victims were the birds in the sky. Not far from the base was a bustling town, oblivious to the looming danger. A couple was driving along the road when they suddenly noticed the road ahead littered with bird carcasses. As they got out to investigate, a mutated ostrich suddenly attacked the man's face with a vicious peck. Patricia quickly drove her boyfriend away from the scene. Within minutes, his face began to puss. Seeing his agony, Patricia decided to stop at a gas station to find some water for him. However, the abandoned station held no water, only a zombie lurking inside. The zombie wasted no time and lunged at Patricia, but she ruthlessly pushed it away. Frustrated, the zombie pulled out a machete from its waist and swung it at her. Patricia's agile movements saved her from becoming the zombie's victim. However, the persistent zombie chased her outside, still swinging its weapon. Just as the zombie attempted another strike, Patricia swiftly dodged, causing the machete to hit the gas pump, causing gasoline to gush out. Patricia quickly created distance and ignited the gasoline with her lighter before leaving the gas station before the explosion. Meanwhile, the base received news of infected individuals in the town. To prevent further spread of the virus, the military high command immediately ordered the town to be sealed off and all living beings inside to be exterminated. The doctor vehemently opposed this decision, as it meant thousands of innocent lives would perish. However, the military officers remained unmoved, insisting that the priority was to develop a cure to save them. The town was peaceful and quiet until a horde of zombie birds descended upon it. Three soldiers were flirting with girls on the bus ahead when the chaos erupted. The bus driver, unable to avoid the flock, collided with the birds, allowing the zombie birds to swarm into the bus and attack the passengers. One girl was severely injured by the pecking, her face disfigured, but fortunately, the zombie birds left shortly after. With no nearby hospital, they had no choice but to take the injured Leah to a nearby motel, only to find it in ruins. Seeing Leah's infected wound, Alex decided to find a doctor, with Lara accompanying her. However, their car broke down shortly after leaving. Lara ventured into a nearby house for help, unaware that its occupants had turned into zombies. As Lara headed upstairs, a zombie followed her but instead of attacking directly, it pushed her into the pool on the ground floor. By the time Alex arrived, Lara had met her demise in the contaminated pool. With no other options, Alex had to flee, 
but the noise attracted a horde of zombies. Fortunately, he was agile enough to escape from the house and coincidentally met Patricia and her boyfriend on the way, so he promptly joined forces with them. Meanwhile, the fully armed forces had entered the infected area and started indiscriminate cleaning. However, Leah's condition was deteriorating rapidly. A couple arrived in the kitchen, hoping to find something to eat, but as soon as they opened the refrigerator, a mutated zombie head flew out, biting the man's neck on the spot. The woman also fell victim to the zombie's clutches. As night fell, Patricia's group was still on their way to the hospital when her boyfriend, sitting in the passenger seat, suddenly mutated and lunged towards Patricia. Fortunately, Alex intervened just in time to pull the zombie away, allowing Patricia to break and jump out of the car to safety. However, Alex was thrown off the car by the zombie and before he could get up, the zombie attacked him again. Although Alex managed to kick the zombie away, he was slapped in the face. Initially stunned, Alex quickly fought back against the zombie, but just as he gained the upper hand, more zombies suddenly appeared. In the end, Alex was overwhelmed by the horde of zombies, leaving Patricia no choice but to flee. However, she found herself surrounded by zombies ahead, with more closing in from behind. With no other option, Patricia jumped into the river to escape. Back at the hotel, the two soldiers became worried when Alex and Lara didn't return. Little did they know that Leah had already mutated inside, and Nancy narrowly escaped an attack while asleep, using a window to successfully kill the zombie. Downstairs, one of the soldiers saw a figure emerge near the bus, it was Patricia, who had narrowly escaped death. However, she was closely followed by a horde of zombies. The group immediately reinforced the hotel, but the zombies effortlessly breached their defenses. One of the men was knocked down instantly, forcing the others to retreat to the second floor. To their surprise, the zombies could climb walls and some even descended from above. With limited firepower, they could only jump from the second floor to the first. They continued to flee until dawn, narrowly evading the pursuing zombies. After reaching the shore, they boarded a small wooden boat and left the area, while the military continued to clean up the infected and urgently worked on developing a cure. As long as the doctor succeeded, they would cease their cleansing operations in the quarantine zone. Unfortunately, there were no results yet. Meanwhile, the exhausted group rested on the shore. Suddenly, they spotted a chicken. The bespectacled man's eyes lit up, and he rushed to catch it for breakfast, but instead collided with the soldiers from the military. Following the principle of eliminating all living creatures, the bespectacled man was shot on the spot, prompting the others to flee for their lives. Later, they arrived at a hospital. Just as Patricia and Nancy stepped inside, they heard the sounds of agony emanating from one of the patient rooms. It was a pregnant woman about to give birth. Patricia immediately went to fetch her companion for help, while Nancy stayed behind to care for the woman. However, as expected, disaster struck. A zombie suddenly appeared behind Nancy and promptly dispatched her. Meanwhile, Patricia was ambushed by a zombie while searching for the soldiers. To her horror, it was her mutated boyfriend. Patricia grabbed a nearby wooden stick and fought back against the zombie. Seizing the opportunity when the zombie boyfriend fell, she swiftly dispatched him. The two soldiers rushed over upon hearing the commotion, only to find Nancy dead. They quickly fled the hospital. Unexpectedly, the area outside was already teeming with zombies. In a critical moment, Roger found a bucket of gasoline in the car. He poured the gasoline on the ground, lit it, temporarily halting the zombie attack. However, just as he was about to leave, he discovered zombies behind them as well. In a moment of crisis, Patricia spotted a hand grenade under the car. Kenny decisively picked it up and threw it, causing a massive explosion that took down a large number of zombies. The three quickly took advantage of the opportunity to leave. Not far away, they saw a military helicopter parked in an open space. Kenny, who could fly a plane, immediately took Patricia on board. However, Roger, still wanting to kill more zombies, hesitated. By the time the helicopter was already taking off, he made a desperate leap, grabbing onto the helicopter's landing gear. Little did he know, there were zombies hidden in the grass below. Roger was grabbed by the leg and dragged down into the horde of zombies, ultimately meeting his demise. As the horde engulfed him, Kenny and Patricia could only pilot the helicopter away, unaware that the virus had already spread to other cities.